morning, everybody. Uh, thank you so much, Basam, for the nice introduction. It is a real pleasure to, to be here today. And uh, I'm going to talk to you about what I see as a, as a possible vision for Romania's youth. The reason I decided to talk about this is because, number one, I am extremely passionate about youth issues. And uh, I truly believe that the young generation in Romania has the potential to, to make positive, lasting change in the country. Uh, the second reason is that over the last few years, I have been extremely, extremely fortunate to work with young people, not only from Romania, but from all over the world, and to get there, to see their enthusiasm, their dedication, and their passion for, for making a difference. And if it works in Guatemala or you know, in uh, other countries, why wouldn't it work in Romania? And finally, um, I would, I would just like to, I think it's actually a, a good time to stop seeing you know, Romania as a bad place or a place where you know, things are not happening about you know, uh, looking at Romania at a place that uh, what will happen to the country you know, in the future, where are we heading, things are so bad so we might as well just all leave the country and you know, uh, forget about it. I think that uh, we really need to, to, to take a different lens and uh, tackle the problems differently. Um, so, since time is actually running out, let me delve right into it. Uh, let's start with this first question. What, what will happen to Romania? Uh, in 2009, there has been a very famous study by the CCSB, which is, I think, the Centro Pentru Cercetari Sociologici uh, Branding, commissioned by the Ministry of Youth and, uh, and Sport, that uh, targets exactly this, like, what are, what are the attitudes, the main interest of Romanian youth? And this study has revealed some very, very interesting, uh, interesting results. Uh, what will happen to Romania? So this is our country. One of the questions they asked was, what, where do you think our country is heading? Do you think our country is heading into the right direction, into the wrong direction, don't know, are not interested? 62% of those surveyed indicated that Romania is heading in the wrong direction, you know, versus only 29% who think that actually we're, we're doing something well and we're getting into the right direction. If we look at a subsample of young people between 18 and 34, the percentage are even more extreme. 70% of youth in Romania believes that Romania is not going to the right direction, and only 20% have a more upbeat, uh, upbeat idea about this. In the same, um, this, the, another main question was, what do you think that our the three main problems that Romania is confronting today. You know, 91% of respondents indicated that it's the economy, you know, 55% indicated the standard of living, and 43% indicated politics, which are obviously all very important issues. They are current affairs. Uh, let's look a little bit more into each of them. What about the economy? Do you think it's a problem? You know, most people said that it's the economic crisis. It hurt, it really affected us, it touched us, it, you know, um, it unemployment related to that, right? Because of the economic crisis, there are no job prospects, no job opportunities. Uh, you know, I don't really see my future. In terms of the standard of living, what, what, are the, what about the standard of living that bothers people, that think that it's problematic? You know, people think about poverty. You know, they say that, well, there's a lot of poverty in Romania, and unfortunately, it seems that because of the economic crisis, you know, Romania's poverty rate increased since we joined the EU. Uh, where now probably we have a more poor people in 2010 than we had in 2007, which is really sad, but uh, it, it's a fact. Right? The other issue is that the declining incomes. You know, people see their salaries going down, people see their you know, uh, starting salaries much lower than they used to be a few years ago. And remember, this is a study from 2009, right? In 2010, th this issue is probably even more current with all the public wage reductions and uh, pension reductions. In terms of politics, right, what are the f three, four, five main issues that people have identified? You know, people complain about corruption as being a problem. People indicate that the government and the parliament are problematic, right? So here are the two main pillars, or some of the most important pillars in any democracy, right, that should be solution providers. They are indicated by people as being problems. Right? The politicians as a class, you know, young people in Romania think that the politicians as, as a whole are, are part of the problem, not part of the solution. And finally, you know, lying. Like people say that there is a generalized state of lying in the country that bothers them. You know, 
and I think it's, it's, uh, it's a valid, valid concern. But what about other things, right? So we've seen that, you know, yes, it's politics, standard of living, you know. Um, what about people and their mentality? You know, do you think that our mentality, or in general, the, you know, the mentality that is very, very present here, that maybe we tend to victimize ourselves, that maybe we try to avoid taking on responsibilities. You know, do you think that that's a concern too for young people? It doesn't seem to be a major problem, right? It seems that only 7% of respondents indicated, you know, people in hum interhuman relations as a problem in Romania. Really, what about education, right? Again, do you think that education is a problem in Romania, that our education system is so perfectly functioning and things are so well uh, going and, you know, education, we all know that education is, means a better future. Again, it doesn't seem to be a problem. Only 5% of those surveyed indicated the educational system as a problem, as a major problem in Romania. You know, and really. Finally, I think that the most revealing thing of the study is that what when asked what were the three most important things that the state should do for, for them, 77% of those surveyed indicated that you know, the state should provide them with opportunities, with jobs, with career advancement. 36% of them indicated that they want the state to provide apartments and housing and you know, land for them to build something, right? How many of them do you think that, you know, think the state should invest more in education? Do you think it's more like 50% or more 5%? You know, I have to maybe disappoint you, but it's actually very low. It's only 14% of people see the state's needs to, to invest more in education. So, getting back to the original question, what, what, what will happen to Romania? What do you think will happen? Right? It certainly from this doesn't, it doesn't look like a pretty picture at all. Right? We have only almost 2.4 million Romanians considered to leave the country for good which is on top of the two million that have already left, right? So here suddenly we have four and a half million Romanians that are either considering leaving the country or have already left. That's 20% of the whole population. Of these, almost 50% of them are youth between 18 and 32 years old. You know, these are the people that should be really producing or you know, be productive for the next 10, 20, 30, 40 years. You know, they want to leave. Indeed, 37% of, of the youth mentioned that they are likely to leave Romania permanently. So here's the key word, it's permanently. You know, it's not going abroad to study for half a year or a year or two years. It's not going to work in London or New York or Hong Kong for a couple of years and then use your experience and come back. Just leave Romania permanently. You know, maybe come back on vacation and visit your parents, but that's it. Right? And finally, you have, as I mentioned, as we've seen in the previous slide, there's a very high expected level of state paternalism. Right? So people in Romania, a lot of people in Romania still expect the state to provide for them. They expect the state to provide for them with jobs, they expect the state to provide them with career advancement, to give them housing, and, you know, do you think there's potentially a little problem here that 20 years after the fall of communism, most people in Romania still expect to be given things as opposed to obtain them themselves? You know, why, why do you think that only 14% of people see education as a priority, right? I mean, it's, it's, it's an, I think it's an important question, because education is a means, is an instrument through which you can actually provide for yourself, but apparently it doesn't seem like that. Let us take a quick look at the past, present, and future, right? The past. The past, we cannot change the past, right? So it is what it is, right? I like to see as the past, I'm a, a bit of an economist, so I like to see as the past as a sunk cost, right? You cannot, you cannot really get back what, what, you know, what happened over the last 10 years, 20 years, 5 years, Whatever we do, we're not going to recover it, right? And it's fine, we can blame, we can blame, you know, the communists for having ruled us for 50 years. We can blame bad luck and destiny. We can blame, you know, corruption. We can blame the capitalists. We can blame the politicians. We can blame, you know, foreign companies for having taken over our resources. You know, we can even blame God, right? I mean, God doesn't love us, so, you know, oh, too bad. Whatever we blame, we still cannot get back, right, what we have lost. That's lost, it's gone, right? Let's do a little bit more of a visual uh, take on this, right? So here's the past, right? There's a train, it's at the end of there, we are never going to recover that, right? Here's the present, right? People, young people leaving the country, wanting to go for good, 
But on the same at the same time, as you'll see, uh, there's also a current that you know people either want to come back or there are quite a few things actually happening that you might not see necessarily in the media all day. But the big question is the future, right? Where do we want to go in the future? And this is the only thing that we can actually influence, right? It's not the past, like the present is what it is, but we can do whatever we do in the present to make sure that you know, we have a better future and that tomorrow will be better than today. So I would just like to propose to you um, a different perspective. And although I really hate dividing people into boxes or assigning people into boxes because I do believe that people are very complex humans, I mean, they're obviously very complex beings, Let's do, since we're a TED and it's an unrestricted exchange of ideas, let's us, let me propose to you the following. There are two main categories of people, right? On one hand, we have the spectators. Who are the spectators, right? The spectators are the ones that let things happen to them. They tend to be generally risk averse. They're often pessimistic. They're cynical about most things. They constantly complain about everything and anything. One of their guiding principles is hasta y viata, you know, that's life, c'est la vie, I can't do anything, I'm too small to, you know, make an impact. They also tend not to question why some things happen the way they do. They tend to th take things as given and, again, back to the same attitude, I'm too small, I can't change. Maybe counterintuitively, on the other hand, they tend to be experts on everything, right? They tend to be experts on soccer, to structured finance, to, you know, Romanian Communist Party ideology after Ceausescu's reign. They, they are the specialists, they, all, they know everything. But they're the ones that do the talking. They don't always, or in most cases, they don't do the action. On the other hand, you have the doers. Who are the doers? The doers are the risk takers. They're the ones who enjoy taking on new challenges. They are proactive solution seekers. They focus on impacts, on results. You know, they want to see the end result. They want to see the impact that they have. They are bold. They are not afraid of failure because they recognize that only by failing sometimes you can become better, right? You learn from your past mistakes so that you avoid them the next time. And they're mostly optimistic, right? And let me, let me tell you an anecdote that some of you have probably heard about what, what is the difference between an optimist and a pessimist. So there is this, you know, shoe company that really wants to expand in Africa. And uh, they sent two of their marketing people or business development people in Africa to explore the new market opportunities there. And the first one sends an email a couple of days later saying, oh, absolute disaster, like nobody's wearing shoes here, you know, like there's no market opportunity, we're completely wasted $5,000 on my trip here, I'm coming back to the headquarters in a couple of days. A few days later, the second marketing people, the, the, the second marketing person sends back an email. Fantastic opportunity! There are 20 million people wearing with no shoes, so there's a market opportunity for you know, at least 20 million pairs of shoes, if not even more. Right? So here's the same problem, addressed from two different perspectives. You know, the optimist versus the pessimist. You know, the doer versus the spectator. I can sit back and say, well, there's no market opportunity. You know, there's nothing we can do. Or, well, let's use the fact that all these people are not wearing shoes you know, to make sure that they will. Um, I'd like to propose to you three types of doers. You know, first, there are those who strive to provide for others more than what they were provided with. And I would include here in this category my parents, our parents. You know, who most of them, yes, they lived under very difficult times during the communist period. Uh, but at the same time, they made sure that we will have a better life, right? And that we have access to opportunities, to, we'll have access to education, to access to travel abroad. And I think that, you know, despite all the hardships, they're probably proud that, as opposed to their youth, we, ha we have all of these opportunities. On the other hand, we have those who want to so-called own the world, right? For whom the private gain is more important than the public gain. And these are, you know, the business people, the entrepreneurs, the profit maximizers. And I actually have a lot of respect for most of them because a lot of them give back to society. You know, you have the occasional Warren Buffett, you have the occasional, you know, Bill Gates that gets back to society most of his wealth. They are also the job creators. They are create a lot of opportunities for others. And finally, you have those who want to save the world from those who want to own it, right? For whom the public gain is more important than the private gain, right? And here you have the volunteers, you have the people who work in non-profit organizations, the people who work in public service, and all of these who try to make sure that, you know, the next day will be better than the, other, uh, than the previous day. So, what do you think is Romania's, you know, use deeper problem? Do you really think it's the economy? Do you really think it's, you know, the standard of living, the politics? Which, please don't get me wrong, they are extremely important issues, but they are current issues, right? 
why, why, why shouldn't we look more at the deeper question, right? What about maybe there are too few spectators, too, too, too many spectators and maybe not enough doers? Let me tell you a little bit about a new generation of young Romanians that, that I see emerging. You know, and you know, I totally understand and very well the challenges faced by the young generation. And uh, I'm one of them. You know, I lived here until I was 17. I kept in very close contact with the country. I've done a lot of projects in Romania over the past 10 years. So, you know, yes, I might have traveled the world, I might have gone to great universities, but at the, the end of the day, you know, I'm just a kid from a small town of Arad who happened to have an amazing family who valued education, who valued uh, access to opportunities, you know, traveling, you know, getting to develop, uh, access to foreign cultures. And I perfectly understand all these challenges. But at the same time, I also understand that by doing nothing, right, and just simply waiting for time to come, or for the, uh, to, to pass by and fix things, or waiting for state to provide, things will simply not get better. You know, the values that this young generation of Romanians that I see they value strong work ethic, they are proactive, they are involved in local communities, they are dedicated to making a positive difference. You know? And I think that the fact that, for instance, we have the TEDx, the second TEDx Bucharest here today, is a perfect example of that. Right? There's an army of volunteers here that put this amazing event together, everything in their spare time. You know, they're doing this on top of their jobs, on top of their studies, on top of everything. Right? It's all volunteer. They are part of the new Romanian generation. You know, then there's this guy you probably heard of, uh, Razvan Kranga from Sibiu. You know, he's a recent IT graduate, just producing Apple applications for Apple. You know, he doesn't need a state to come and provide him with a job. He doesn't need a state, you know, to provide him with an apartment. He provides from his, for himself. So I do believe that youth in Romania has the potential, ought to, and will be the agents of change. You know, and to paraphrase U.S. President Bill Clinton. There's nothing wrong with the youth in Romania that cannot be cured by what is right with the youth in Romania. You know, our youth organization and other like-minded organizations, they are, let me show you a couple of pictures. You know, what do you see here? I see young people engaged in debates. I, young, I see young people working on projects. You know, here, for instance, we met at a conference in Boston last year, you know, 6,000 kilometers away from Romania to identify solutions to Romania's problems, you know? Not just focus on the problem, but focus on the solution. This is the problem, how can we fix it? You know, these are people that are doing amazing things. We have people who are doing the Diaspora Voteza, the Diaspora Votes project. You know, it's a bunch of 20-something-year-olds who are trying to really change the electoral law to make sure that people, Romanians everywhere, have their constitutional right respected, that they can vote. You know, it's one of the basic rights that the Romanian constitution provides. Our youth organization also provide, and others, right, provide a microcosm of what Romanian youth is truly, truly capable of. You know, Romanian youth is forward-looking as well as innovative and proactive. They're dedicated and focusing on getting things done. They're engaged in their communities. It's amazing to see how many volunteers, how many non-profits are in Romania that are doing amazing things. You don't read about them all the time in the media. You don't see them on TV. It doesn't mean things are not happening. They're tolerant, they're appreciative of similarities, but also respectful of differences. They're also doers, not just spectators. And I think it's a very key point. So, to wrap up, what do you think will happen to Romania? I have a lot of faith that you know, things will eventually get back on the right track. Now, I think the three key takeaways would be, for the last 15 minutes or so, number one, to really stop fooling ourselves that by you know, waiting for time or for God or for Brussels or for Washington to do something for us, you know, things will fix. No, only we can change things. We are the only ones that can make a difference for us. Number two, right, we should definitely look into addressing a problem from the perspective of a doer, not a spectator. I think it makes a world of difference. And finally, we should get serious about investing in what is our most important resource, the human capital, you know, invest in education and put a lot of money in education, and I guarantee that 5, 10, 20 years down the road, Romania will be a different place. I'd just like to leave you pondering about a uh, quote by Bobby Kennedy. Some people see things the way they are and ask why. I dream of things that never were and ask why not. So please, when next time somebody asks you, why would you do this? It's not going to change anything. It's not going to have an impact. Nothing will happen. Ask them, why not? Thank you very much.
Thank you. Thank you, Vasant.